must have taken a nap and forgot to wake up. <laughs> but we're here to praise the Lord, aren't we? Hallelujah. It's good to be back in the house of the Lord. Let's all stand as we start our service. Brother Ron, would you lead us to prayer for our service tonight? Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus on the inside, working on the outside. <laughs> Says, Lord, hurry up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. Jesus on the inside, he's working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. Jesus on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. Oh, what a change in my life. Yes, Jesus on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. Jesus on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. Jesus on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. Oh, what a change in my life. It's the Holy Ghost and fire. Changing my desires, oh what a change in my life. It's the Holy Ghost and fire, changing my desires, oh what a change in my life. It's the Holy Ghost and fire, changing my desires, oh what a change in my life. Oh, what I have found a deep peace that I never had known, and the joy this world could not afford. Since I yielded control of my body and soul to my wonderful, wonderful Lord. I
abundant life-giving word. O oh, thou ancient of days, thou art worthy all praise to my wonderful, wonderful Lord. My wonderful Lord, my wonderful Lord, my angels and seraphs in heaven adore. I know Thou art mine, my Savior divine, my wonderful, wonderful Lord, my wonderful Lord, my wonderful Lord, my angels and seraphs in heaven adore. I know Thou art mine, my Savior divine, my wonderful, wonderful Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Aren't you glad Thank for you our Jesus. wonderful Lord? Amen. Hallelujah. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of This is my story, this 
testimony that they'd like to give tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was in the grocery store uh, a week or so ago, and I walked in the cash register with a couple of items. <coughs> I placed on the gentleman in front of me, and he paid for his. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Uh, for those on, online, uh, uh, Brother William had said he's given a testimony. They went to a grocery store, and, and it was a guy in front of you that paid for your groceries also. Yeah. And uh, praise the Lord. That's praise good. God. Passing on the goodness. <laughs> Pay it Amen. forward. Amen. Amen. Any other testimonies? I want to thank the Lord that he's always good. He always answers prayer. He always provides. Praise, praise God. God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Oh, praise, praise the Lord. 
Barry has given testimony. He wasn't here this morning. He wasn't feeling well, and he came tonight, and he's feeling good now. So Amen. praise God. Praise Amen. God. Praise the Lord. <laughs> amen. Amen. And sorry, I got to re repeat his uh, testimony. He was in the, it was a grocery store again? Walmart. Walmart. And this uh, lady started uh, 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 talking about the second coming of the Lord and quoting and, scripture. Uh, quoting scripture. Yeah, praise, praise the Lord. God. And so, uh, and uh, Robert was saying we need, to, we need to be vocal and bold about oh, cheering amen. Jesus, talking about God. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. The Lord for service we had this morning. Yes, God was so here. He blessed Lord. hearts. Amen. And I believe he answered prayers. Yes. yes Hallelujah. Yes, amen. Yeah. Yep. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. We don't ever want to just come to church to put on a program. Amen. amen. The whole amen. purpose is to, is to meet with our king amen. and to be encouraged and blessed. And if you, you come burdened down or discouraged or whatever, God wants you to leave happy with a spring in your step. Amen. amen. Praise the Lord. And, and so uh, definitely, you know, I just encourage you. You know, the, the way the Holy Spirit works is uh, when you come to church that it might be through a song you know, the Holy Spirit will touch you. It might yes. be during the prayer time, the Holy Spirit will touch you. It might be through the message, you know, God yeah. will just really, really get a hold of your heart. But you know what? Sometimes it's through someone else praying for you. Amen. 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 And, uh, and so uh, don't ever leave. If you, if you, you know, uh, if you still need a, a touch in your heart, in your life, you know, get a hold of me, get a hold of, you know, just, anyone here and Amen. say, I need prayer. Can you pray for me? You yes. know, I just don't yes. feel the victory right now. I need, yes. I need God's grace and praise the Lord. Amen. We come to be uh, strengthened, comforted and encouraged in church. Amen. Well, uh, there's some, uh, you know, you, you can be seated if you like, that's fine. And uh, I think you can sit down and pray, right? <laughs> don't start talking. Some of you are talking. We're going to pray. All right, so, uh, well, we can scratch Barry off the prayer list. He, he's, he was on here from this morning. We need to pray for uh, Pastor Keith, and uh, uh, he's uh, under the weather today and, and uh, still undergoing some tests and, and things, and he needs a touch in his body. And uh, I know he was watching online, and, uh, and so uh, uh, praise the Lord. We're going to continue to pray for Pastor Keith. And then... Uh, uh, Young girl, Olivia, 12 years old with cancer. Um, let's see. Now, she had, no, this is a different, this is a different girl because, let's see, the, the other 12-year-old who had a, a tuber in her brain, in the middle of her brain, she had surgery, and that was successful. Yeah, this is a friend of Right. Uh, yeah, uh, Faye's, yeah. I think. Yeah, Faye. Yeah, she sent me a picture, just a... Just a, you know, pretty young little girl, 12 years old, facing cancer. And at first they weren't able to do treatments, but now, now they have been able to, praise the Lord. And, uh, and then also somebody had written on here, and definitely uh, folks that have lost loved ones the last few months. And uh, there's, there's been a lot, of, a lot of home goings and a lot of sadness, and, uh, but God loves us and, and he wants to, wants to comfort us, doesn't he? Amen. Amen. Well, let's lift these up before the Lord. And if you have a need and you just give that to Jesus. Amen. Thank Amen. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, you're our high priest. Lord, you, you bear our burdens. Lord, you intercede for us. Lord, it's because of you. It's because of you, Jesus, your blood, your sacrifice, Lord. We met with you Lord, at the table of communion this morning, Lord, it's all because of you. Lord, we have confidence that, Lord, we're loved. Lord, that, that our prayers are accepted. Lord, that we're forgiven, that we can stand in the presence of a holy God. And, and God, we can give you our, our cares, our burdens, our needs. 
And God, we thank you for that, Lord. Thank you for testimonies. Thank you for answers to prayer. God, we give you praise for that. And uh, Lord, we lift up Pastor Keith before you, God. We, we thank you for him. We love him. And Lord, we, we pray again, God, that you would touch him. God, uh, whatever's uh, going on with his lungs and his body, Lord, we pray that you'll clear that all up, that you'll strengthen him and heal him. Jesus, thank you that you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. Lord, you're still the healer. You're still the Savior. God, we love you. We give you praise. God, thank you for uh, this young girl, Olivia, and she's undergoing uh, treatments. Lord, we pray that you would totally rid her body of this cancer. Jesus, you are the Lord of life. God, we read in your word that, Lord, you touched and, uh, 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 Lord, you raised a 12-year-old girl from the dead. Lord, you healed her. And, God, we ask that you'll bless Olivia, God, with a full, healthy life. God, this other uh, girl, Lord, at 12 years old, she just had surgery on her brain. God, thank you it was successful. God, we pray that you'd repair, God, anything that was damaged, irritated, whatever in her brain, everything would function properly. Lord, bless these families. God, I don't know where they're at with you, but Lord, we pray that, that Heavenly Father, you would draw them closer to Jesus. Lord, that they would give you all the praise. They would look to you, Lord. Jesus, you are our answer. And Lord, those who have lost loved ones, God, Lord, uh, just even recently, Lord, uh, Debbie and her family, and, and uh, Lord, just surround them with your, with your presence, with your love, with your encouragement, your grace. Lord, only you can comfort. Lord, only you can touch the heart. And God, we pray for that, Lord. Touch and bless your people. God, every uh, need represented here, God, uh, those who, uh, Lord, weren't able to come this evening, they're at home. God, we ask your blessing. Lord, just walk into their homes right now. Lord, let them feel your presence. And Lord, touch each and every one, God, in a personal way. Thank you, Lord. You're a personal God. You love us, Jesus. And we give you praise. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I uh, feel the need to, to pray, uh, Lord, for our president this evening. God, we pray that you would help him. God, that you'd give him grace. God, that you'd give him wisdom. God, we pray that he'd have good counselors around him to give him good advice. Uh, Holy Spirit, you'd move in his heart, God. Lord, to, to convict him of uh, sin and Lord, to make righteous decisions. God, we pray for the leaders in our country, oh God. Lord, you told us to pray, God, that they would, get, they would be saved, that they would receive Jesus. God, we pray for that. That's their greatest need. Lord, we pray, God, a hedge of protection around our country. Lord, not only from our physical enemies, but Lord, our spiritual enemies, Lord, that the workings of the evil one would be bound. Lord, we pray, God, your blessing, God, on the United States of America. God, we thank you for our country. And Father, we pray in your grace that Holy Spirit, again, you would sweep across this land. God, that you would convict, God, of sin and righteousness and judgment. God, that you would open people's eyes, oh, Holy Spirit. Lord, that they would see they need Jesus. God, they would see, Lord, that how trapped they are and their ears would be open to the gospel. Jesus, you are the answer. Lord, individuals being born again. Lord, marriages being healed. Lord, uh, God, people's minds and emotions, God, being healed and straightened out and set free from the lies of the enemy. God, families being healed, communities, Lord, coming back together, Lord, because of you, Jesus, being born in the hearts of people. Jesus, you are the answer. And God, as Robert uh, spoke up tonight, Lord, may we have the boldness, Holy Spirit, that you bring to tell people in grocery stores, God, people in Walmart, people wherever we are at about you. God, to, to tell others about you, uh, Lord, with wisdom uh, when we're online, we're on social media. Holy Spirit, give us the words, give us the grace to glorify Jesus. And we pray, come Lord Jesus, come Lord Jesus, you are the answer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Jesus is the answer. He is the answer. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, let's, uh, let's continue to worship the Lord in our giving. So let's all stand back up and uh, <laughs> praise God. You want to uh, pray over the offering, Beverly?
we thank you for a time to give to you tonight, Father Lord, a, a portion of what you've given to us, Father. And we thank you for it, and we ask that you bless this congregation and this church. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. Jesus on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. Jesus on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. Oh, what a change in my life. Jesus on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. Jesus on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. Jesus on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. Oh, what a change in my life. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, worship team. Praise the Lord. Well, we've had, uh, usually, Pastor Keith had been preaching the Sunday evening, and, and so uh, um, I was praying, Lord, what would you have me to preach tonight? And I, I felt the Lord, direct me to just go ahead and continue on uh, with the Sermon on the Mount, uh, where we had left off. And so we had been going uh, through the Sermon on the Mount on uh, Wednesdays, and uh, praise the Lord. It's uh, awesome seeing uh, Jesus' sermon, <laughs> you know, and uh, praise God. Well, um, let's see, let me get to this starting slide here. All right, well, let's just go ahead and pray over the word right now. Jesus, you said heaven and earth will pass away, but your word will never pass away. And uh, Lord, it is eternal. Jesus, you are the living word that came to earth. And uh, Lord, I pray that as we are, Lord, uh, learning from your sermon, hearing your words that you physically preached on this earth, Lord, uh, air was leaving your lungs and going forth and speaking words, Lord, of life. And uh, God, we can hear them today. And Lord God, I pray that uh, we would have ears to hear. Lord, that you would give us understanding, Holy Spirit. And uh, God, whenever we hear your word, whenever we read your word, God, help us, Lord, to, to, uh, to, to be sensitive what you're speaking to us personally. God, we pray for that in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, it's easy to, to you know, nudge your neighbor, your spouse. <laughs> talking about you <laughs> and uh but we want to we want to be sensitive to to us amen like uh, i heard this a long time ago and i know this isn't new to you you, you need to read your own mail right <laughs> all right so uh well last time on uh let's see in jesus sermon on the mount uh we were in uh, uh chapter 5 verses 17 and 20 and uh we'd gone through the beatitudes uh you know uh the first part, and, uh, and I was saying, you know, that's really, Jesus was giving the heart of a true disciple, the heart of a true disciple, and, uh, you know, a lot of times we like to look at lists, and we turn it into, you know, like the Boy Scout, Girl Scout, okay, I gotta, I gotta earn these badges, I gotta, I gotta get this, and really it's more God is saying, no, we're looking in the mirror, you know, we're looking, do you look like a disciple or not? Do you look like, you know, 1 Corinthians 13, do you have the love of God in your life? You know, let's, let's look at this. And uh, even the Ten Commandments, it, it's a mirror. And uh, it's really a mirror. Um, uh, oh, let's see. Uh, oh, what's his name now? Um, drawing a blank. Anyway, this uh, evangelist who he, God had, you know, he felt God really showed him that, you know, and, and really through the scripture that the Ten Commandments, the Bible says the law was put in charge to 
lead us to Christ. And so the Ten Commandments is really for, the, for even the non-Christian to, to see, wow, I have sin in my life. I need a Savior. And uh, so, but we like to turn those things into, well, I'm, I'm keeping them all. I must be doing good. And uh, nope, because uh, like uh, the last time we were, we were in the Sermon on the Mount, we saw that Jesus said, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you're not going to enter the kingdom of heaven. So if you're looking at merit, you know, merit wise, uh, being right in God's sight, there ain't no way you're going to beat a Pharisee. <laughs> I mean, they were just so nitty gritty about everything. The point Jesus was making is don't do more than them. It's you can't do it. You need Jesus. You need me. Amen. And uh, so, uh, the, and, and that's, that's the whole issue. The law was put in charge to bring us to Jesus. We need a Savior. We need a Savior. Praise the Lord. Now, does that mean that God is not interested in us living a righteous life? No, God is very interested in us living a righteous life. But we can only do it through the power of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord with His grace. And so, salvation is a free gift. And then by the Spirit, we live how God wants us to live. But we don't live how God wants us to live to have salvation or to have heaven. Amen? So can't get the cart before the horse. All right. So um, uh, we looked at that Jesus came to uh, fulfill the law, not to do away with it. And, he, and, and remember I talked about in the, the way the rabbis talked back then, Jesus was saying, when he says, I didn't come to a, abolish the law, right? But to, uh, to establish it um, or to fulfill it, he is saying that I came to give a correct interpretation, okay? I've come not to give an incorrect, but a correct interpretation. And tonight we're going to begin to look at the different things that, uh, the different topics, the Pharisees were misinterpreting the word of God. They were teaching God's people wrong. And Jesus saying, let me tell you how it really is. Okay. And he's straightening, straightening them out. And uh, praise the Lord. Let's see. Oh, I didn't, I didn't put this in the in the, uh, the computer, but so I'll just read the scripture to you. Um, concerning Jesus' righteousness, this is Romans chapter 4 and verse 2, and uh, I'm going to read verses two, to, 2 and 3 and then skip to verse 23. The Bible says, if in fact Abraham was justified by works, he had something to boast about, but not before God. What does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. And then verse 23, the words it was credited to him were not written for him alone, but also for us to whom God will credit righteousness for us who believe in him who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead. He was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. Praise the Lord. Jesus is our righteousness. Praise the Lord. You know, we uh, sung about the blood this morning. We sung about the blood this evening. The blood of Jesus. It's the blood of Jesus that cleanses us. It's the blood of Jesus that turns, uh, turns aside God's wrath that we deserve. It's, it's all Jesus. And, and Jesus being raised from the dead for our justification. In other words, all the sins, all the, all the charges we had against us in God's courtroom are now dropped. Because of Jesus. No more charges. And it's not because we were so good, but it's because of Jesus. Praise the Lord. So uh, tonight, um, we're going to be in verses uh, 21 through 26. Uh, so the Pharisees taught that to keep the commandment, do not murder, a, a person merely needed to refrain from killing the guy, <laughs> all right, or killing the lady, all right? Um, However, they didn't address the heart issue, okay? It's deeper than that. And so Matthew chapter 5, verse 21 to 26, if I put this in correctly, you'll be able to see it. You have heard that it was said to our ancestors. Now, this is the, uh, uh, the Christian Standard Bible uh, version. If you, it's a, you have heard that it was said to our ancestors, do not murder, 
and whoever murders will be subject to judgment. But I tell you, everyone who is angry with his brother or sister will be subject to judgment. Whoever insults his brother or sister will be subject to the court. Whoever says you fool will be subject to hellfire. So if you are offering your gift on the altar and there you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and be reconciled with your brother or sister and then come and offer your gift. Reach a settlement quickly with your adversary while you're on the way with him. Uh, oh, to the court, thank you. <laughs> or your adversary will hand you over to the judge and the judge to the officer and you will be thrown into prison. Truly, I tell you, you will never get out of there until you have paid the last penny. Ouch. So, obviously, Jesus is not only concerned about the outward act of physically killing a person, but also what is in a person's heart. Sin begins in the heart. It begins in the heart. The Bible says, for from the heart come evil thoughts, murders. Okay, there it is. It starts in the heart. Murders, adulteries, sexual immoralities, thefts, false testimonies, uh, slander, Okay, so sin starts in the heart, and sin not only begins there, but if it's left there, it grows like a weed. Okay, it will, it will grow. And, uh, and we all know that uh, weeds don't take much to grow, do they? Even in a drought, for Pete's sake, the grass is all brown, but you still have weeds coming up, right? Your, your garden is not doing so good, but there's still weeds. I thought, you know, if some guy uh, uh, learned how to cross-pollinate weeds with tomatoes and all the garden vegetables, boy, he'd make a, <laughs> make a fortune. <laughs> Why don't they do that, right? Then in Ethiopia and all these other places, they'll have vegetables growing out of nothing. <laughs> Maybe somebody tried it, I don't know. So, sin grows in the heart like a weed. This is James chapter 1, verse 14. But each person is tempted when he is drawn away and enticed by his own evil desire. Then after uh, desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And when sin is fully grown, it gives birth to death. Okay, so sins of the heart must be dealt with or it's going to result in death, death spirit spiritually and death even physically okay it will result in death um, and sin when it is full grown gives birth to death you know oftentimes uh, Christians like to blame the devil right it's it's the devil it's the devil that's why I'm being tempted that's why I have this sin that I'm dealing with in my heart and life it's the devil and and so the Christian will rebuke the devil and they'll quote scripture against the devil and, uh, and so, but you know what the Christian really needs to do is go to the cross. <laughs> go to the cross. Uh, what's, what's the first occupation that God gave mankind? Okay, tilling the ground? No. What was the first occupation? Okay, Adam was to keep the garden, right? <laughs> he was a gardener. He was a gardener. Keep the garden. And, uh, and you know what? That's still our occupation today. Everyone is responsible for the garden of their heart. Okay, we're all responsible for the garden of the heart. And uh, in fact, uh, when you read about Jesus' uh, parable of the sower and the seed, really... That is a parable of, 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 uh, of four different hearts. The hard heart, the heart with, with stones, you know, stones of bitterness and anger and things in the person. Uh, the, the, the heart with uh, weeds in it, right? A oh, person, you know, they're, they're after making it rich or they're after fame or they're after this or that, right? Or the good soil, okay? The heart that is, that is tender and soft and free of rocks and weeds and just open for the word of God to come in. And a Christian 
can end up with any of those soils. We have to keep the soil of our heart. That's why it is so important to spend time with the Lord in prayer and in the word. It's so important to come to church because what happens is that if we are neglectful in our relationship with the Lord and, and everything is from him and through him and to him, amen? And so if we do not spend time with the Lord and we don't keep an eye on what's getting into our heart and taking care of those things, what will happen is we'll, we'll end up going from good soil to maybe we got weeds or maybe we have stones in our heart or maybe we're just hard hearted now. And that's why people drop out of, out of church and they fall away from the Lord. And, and they'll say they're a Christian because they said a prayer one day and they used to go to church. But see, now their heart is all hard. And they're just going off and doing this, that, and the other and watching this and that. And nothing bothers them anymore. And, and uh, they're not beyond hope, but they stop gardening. They stop tending the soil of their heart. And so... Um, what we need to do when, when we, instead of blaming the devil, okay, now the devil does tempt, but there's a difference when you know there's something in your heart. And, and it's good to, you know, we got to be careful, you know, Pentecostals like to, you know, da, 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 <laughs> keep talking and praying. And, you know, we need to be quiet too. And we just need to settle our hearts down and allow the Holy Spirit to talk to us, and, uh, and, and he'll shine the light on our, our life, and instead of blaming the devil, say, Lord, Lord, this, what's in my heart is not right. God, forgive me, forgive me. You know, I, I've, I've gotten bitter, or I have anger in my heart, or maybe there's lust, maybe there's whatever, you know, something's there, and instead of trying to do a self-help and, and just get to the cross, amen? It's only Jesus that, that's going to cleanse your heart and cut that out. The, the Bible says, by the Spirit, put to death the misdeeds of the flesh. It's the Holy Spirit that's going to do that work. And praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And uh, so we need to allow the Lord to do the surgery on our heart. We need to spend time in the presence of the Lord so that his good fruit, the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Folks, it's not our fruit. <laughs> If we could come up with it ourselves, we really wouldn't need to go to church anymore, would we? It's the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Spending time with God, he will grow that fruit in the soil of our heart of love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and gentleness and faithfulness and self-control. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so, uh, oh... I'm going to get myself in trouble. So whether it's a diet, <laughs> whether it's money, <laughs> whatever it's binge watching on TV, the fruit of self-control, the Holy Spirit will bring that. Amen. And, uh, you know, I've heard, and, and I know you've heard this too, people said, don't pray for patience. Because if you pray for patience, oh boy, is your life going to be miserable. This lady in church told me this. I was her pastor. She literally told me that. Don't pray for patience. I prayed for it once. And uh, I think, I think what, what's happening is, you know, if you're... I think the person is still trying to rely on themselves for patience. And, uh, or maybe God is, is, and God is trying to show the person that, okay, you're getting into these different situations and you're, you're losing your patience because I'm wanting you to go to my son. I want you to trust my son. Stop trying to be the Christian, a Christian uh, in your own strength, right? You need to go to Jesus. You need to spend time with the Lord. He'll put the fruit of the Holy Spirit in you, Amen. Jesus said that we'll bear much fruit if we stay connected to him, right? Amen. Okay, so it's, it's, his, it's his fruit. Praise the Lord. So uh, salvation, righteousness, and heaven are all free gifts to us from God purchased by Jesus. But a, a pure heart, good character, and right living comes from the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Amen. And uh, it's the Holy Spirit that works in us, right? What, Jesus on the inside right? Working on the outside. Praise the Lord. It's, it's Christ in us. It's Christ in us. So 
let's look at the progression in, in Jesus' sermon, uh, verse 22. He says, but I tell you, everyone who is angry with his brother. So there it is, okay? Uh, Jesus saying, okay, this is in stages. Okay, here there's a person, and now that person has anger in their heart towards somebody. Okay, so the next step, the next step is whoever insults his brother or sister. Okay, now the... Uh, uh, so now it's now that anger is manifesting on the outside, right? What's on the inside is going to come out on the outside. That's why Jesus said, clean the inside of the cup. The outside is going to become clean. Get dirt on the inside. Dirt's going to come out on the outside. It's just how it works. So uh, I believe it's King James and other translations actually leave the Aramaic word raka. Okay? Okay, raka. And what that means is, empty head. In other words, you're, you're insulting the person, you come, you're an idiot. You are an idiot. Okay. And so, um, so it, it went to there, but now it goes even farther. Okay. You fool. Okay. So it went from anger in the heart to insulting the person that you have anger to. Now you're saying you fool. And that's where death comes in. Okay. Um, to call someone a fool in Jesus' time was, uh, was very serious, okay? In our day, it's more like you call them an idiot, okay? Which still isn't nice, okay? But um, the Hebrew word, it means apostasy, rebellion, wickedness. For in Jesus' time, it would be like one Israelite telling another Israelite, you are an apostate, okay? You, uh, you are a rebel against God, okay? In other words, you are a covenant breaker. You are, you know, I mean, this is like really, really bad, 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 okay? And, um, and I don't know, um, but it's, it's words that you're, you're trying to basically kill that person with your tongue, okay? And... Uh, and sadly, you know, it, it can be done in, in the church amongst Christians. And so um, the words we say really does matter. And, uh, and I've talked about this before. In recent years, people who either have taken their own lives, okay, social media, people saying all kinds of things, and the you know, teenager goes and kills themselves because these, you know, just, yeah, Horrible words being said to them. Um, or, you know, mass shootings that have taken place. They take it out on others. And then you find out, you know, the things that were said to them and how this people group, you know, uh, uh, tr how they treated them. And, and there's, it, it's not an excuse. It's not that the person who does the killings uh, gets a pass. But what, hap what Jesus is addressing is, that's why you, you'll, be, you'll be guilty of, of, of uh, murder yourself if maybe you have, you know, by your words, you're planting murder in somebody else's heart by your words, by your treatment of them. And so, uh, you know, those who have um, uh, committed these, you know, just horrible, horrible acts of, of murder, and, and it was because these other people have mistreated them and put that in them, they're guilty of murder too in God's eyes. Not just the person who pulled the trigger, but all these people over here who were doing that. And, you know, the teenager that takes their own life or the adult or whatever, God's holding these people accountable for the words that they said. You know, and so uh, that, that's Jesus. That's Jesus' words. Jesus holds up us responsible for the sin in our hearts and the sin we place in other people's hearts. It's a very serious matter. And uh, in fact, Jesus said in another place that we will all give an account, men will give an account for every idle word they've spoken. Yeah. That's why we need Jesus. <laughs> Aren't you glad you're covered in the blood? You know? 
I've had to say to God before, Lord, all that I said in the past, just erase it from the record. That was wrong. You know, God, forgive me. And uh, praise the Lord. And, and, and when you're born again, all that stuff is, you know, any man being Christ is a new creation. The old is gone. The new has come. And even when we confess our sins, he throws it in the sea of forgetfulness. The word picture God gives us never to be remembered again. And it's just because of Jesus. Praise the Lord. So what else is Jesus concerned about? Okay, um, uh, this isn't rhetorical. I want to see if one of you can answer. Okay, besides our words, what else is Jesus concerned about in, in this passage of Scripture? What's that? Action? Okay, now I'm looking for something else. No? No. Okay, he's very concerned about our relationships. Relationship. You know, the more I read the Bible, I see relationships are like a top priority to God. Our relationship with him and our relationship with one another. And so much of the New Testament has to do with, you know, us having good relationships with one another. And uh, relationships can be difficult, you know, and, and the reason is, okay, some people, some people are just, um, it's just their personality. They don't mean to hurt people with the words they say, but they're just a little more, you know, uh, yeah, outspoken and just, you know, really don't realize they're hurting people. And then to, to compound things, there's some people that are just too sensitive, right? Some people just need to get a little thicker skin, right? And other people who usually say they just need thicker skin, well, they just need to <laughs> be a little gentler and softer in, uh, in their nature, right? In their words. And so, you know, we, we're, all, we're all different. And uh, honestly, I don't believe, uh, uh, well, I don't believe that many people, even unsaved people, but wake up and say, uh, think to themselves, how, how, can I, how can I make somebody's life miserable today? You know, what can I say to somebody to just wreck their day? And definitely, I wouldn't think a, a real Christian uh, do that. But relationships are so important to the Lord. And that's what Jesus is, is focusing on, um, uh, the broken relationship. Because look at verse 23, and we already read this. So if you are offering your gift on the altar and there you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and be reconciled with your brother or sister and then come and offer your gift. So the Lord is saying that relationships with other people are so important that if, let's say, you're going to do something for God, maybe you're going to pray, maybe you're going to worship, maybe, maybe you're going to go out witnessing, maybe you're going to sing a special, maybe you're going to do something for Jesus, and it comes to mind that, you know, I don't, me, me and this person, our relationship is, you know, it's not good. And the Lord says, you know what, just stop what you're doing and go take care of that first and then come do something for me because that's how important relationships are. And so if we've offended someone and, and we don't make things right, in fact, the Lord says that he's, he's going to punish us. Okay, God still punishes, all right? And uh, this is what the Lord says. Reach a settlement quickly with your adversary Okay, because see, you're not viewing the person as your brother or sister in the Lord or maybe your brother and sister in your family or, or your neighbor or whatever it might be. They're your adversary. Reach a settlement quickly with your adversary while you're on the way with him to the court or your adversary uh, will hand you over to the judge and the judge to the officer and you will be thrown into prison. Truly, I tell you, you will never get out of there until you've paid the last penny. <laughs> Lord's like... Relationships are important, and if you don't take care of this, and you got this person mad, hurt, or whatever, and now they're talking to me about it, and you don't take care of it, well, you're gonna, you're, I'm going to punish you. 
That's what the word says, right? I know nowadays we like to think that, oh, no, God, oh, no. God, God's judgment is only passive, okay? And, and there is passive judgment, right? You reap what you sow. But God's judgment is also active, and he loves us. So, well, pastor, I'm not so sure about that. Well, let's look at 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 11. Paul was talking about communion. So then, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an, in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sin against the body and blood of the Lord. Let a person examine himself in this. Let's see, examine himself in this way. Let him eat the bread and drink from the cup. For whoever eats and drinks without recognizing the body, okay, what he is talking about is you and I, the church the body of Christ. We are, the, we are Jesus' body on earth, okay? Whoever eats and drinks without recognizing the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. This is why many, uh, many are, this is why many are sick and ill among you, and many have fallen asleep. He's talking about physical death. Now, this is not losing your salvation, Okay, this is now you get to, this is not you get to heaven and now your bank account's empty, <laughs> all right? <laughs> your rags will look really nice in heaven, but you're going to be in rags. No, it's not, this is not what it's talking about, okay? Um, but this is Jesus. Here, here, Christians were taking communion, celebrating their reconciliation with the Lord, and not caring about their relationships with one another. And that breaks Jesus' heart. And Jesus says, if you don't take care of this, I'm going to get involved. And many sick, look at, many have died. They, these Christians aren't, now I'm not talking about Lighthouse, I'm talking about Paul's time. Brother, sister, so-and-so, they're, they're not in church anymore. <laughs> They're buried because Jesus. That's serious, folks. Jesus, God is love, but God is also, he, he knows how to spank hard. <laughs> right? He disciplines. This is judgment, not, a, not unto hell, but it's discipline. And so that's what the Lord was talking about. In, um, uh, let's see, I won't be able to go back too many clicks. But he says, reach a settlement quickly with your adversary where you're on the way with him to court, or your adversary will hand you over the judge and the judge of the officer, and you will be thrown into prison. Truly, I tell you, you'll never get out of there until you've paid the last penny. And, uh, you know, uh, the Lord in another place is going to talk about forgiveness. Right? I've forgiven you, and, and you're not willing to forgive your brother or sister. And, the, and, and in that parable, Jesus is also saying, you're getting thrown into prison. And I've heard plenty of preachers say, you know, I've talked to this person, that person. They're all bound up with arthritis and, and all these things. And, and here, they needed to forgive. They've held unforgiveness against a brother or sister in the Lord for all these years, not willing to let them go of that debt. And, you know, and it's not until they confess that and get that right, and then God steps in and heals them. And, and honestly, sometimes, you know, if we're sick, and, and we need to be careful, and I never do this, you know, you can't, you can't put, you know, oh, everything's the devil, or everything's sin, or everything's this or that. But you know what? When things aren't going right in our lives, I think the first response of the Christian is, is a real good one, is to get before the Lord and say, God, search me. You know, search me. We need to be humble and say, Lord, is there something in my life? And, uh, and if there is, you know, take care of it. Amen? And if it's not, well, then don't feel guilty and blame yourself because, you know, it might be the devil, <laughs> right? Or it might be, you know, uh, whatever. Um, you know, our bodies aren't redeemed yet. You know, they're just falling apart on us, aren't they? <laughs> they're getting older and older. But... I think a good response is to get before the Lord when things aren't going right, whatever it is in our health, our, our relationships, whatever in life, get before God and say, Lord, search me, search my heart. And uh, that's always a good place to start. So um, 
you know, if I could have the, the worship team come up and, and uh, have you been tending the garden of your heart? Have you been keeping an eye on the condition of your soil? Is it, does it need some watering? Does it need to be plowed up maybe? Uh, is, there, is there stones of bitterness or anger that have gotten there? Is there weeds growing up? Things that are going to pull you away from Jesus. They're just going to distract you and get you, get you sidetracked. What's the condition of the soil of your heart? Maybe tonight when I was preaching through Jesus' sermon, you know, maybe the Lord brought somebody to your heart. You know, maybe you didn't mean to, but maybe you said something to somebody and you know they're offended and you're just like, ah, oh, they just need to get over it. Man up, <laughs> right? Woman up, <laughs> whatever. They just need to get over it. And you know the Holy Spirit saying, no, maybe you need to apologize. Maybe you need to say, I'm sorry. You know, I didn't mean to hurt you and it just came out a little more, you know, harsh or brash or whatever than I should have. And, and so uh, my relationship with you is more important than my pride. And I'm going to just humble myself and say, I'm sorry. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hmm. Amen. You know, um, I'm going to ask the worship team to sing that song that uh, Pat's playing and, and just, just close your eyes and, and just don't sing the song. Let it be a prayer from your heart to the Lord and ask the Holy Spirit to search you. Amen. Search me, oh God, and know my heart today. Try me, oh Savior, know my thoughts, I pray.
know, Jesus, he's the great physician in healing our bodies, but he's also the great physician in doing surgery on our hearts. And uh, the time that we come to the altar, we pray, we're, we're really getting on the Lord's operating table and allowing him to do heart surgery on us. And if you're, you're in need, you're in need of the Lord to do, do a work in your heart. Don't pass this moment by. You know, maybe you're at home and you just need to kneel where you're at and say, oh Lord, Lord, do that work in my heart. Lord, we're no longer going to blame the devil. We're no longer going to try to better ourselves and be a, a better Christian. But Lord, we're getting on your operating table. We're going to the cross. And Lord, we're allowing you to, to cut that out of our hearts. Holy Spirit, to put that to death, that shouldn't be there. Holy Spirit, for you to, to grow that wonderful fruit that only you can bring that we so need in our hearts and lives. Oh, Lord, we come to you this evening. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Lord, God, you know, Lord, and, and those who you spoke to their hearts, Lord, know the people that they need to reconcile with. God, they need to, to pick up the telephone. They need to, to, to go to the home, whatever it might be, they need to make things right. Lord God, even, even when, Lord, God, just help us. Just help each and every person, Lord, that you've been speaking to about this. Give them the wisdom, give them the words, give them the grace. And Lord, may they know, God, you're going to help them. Lord, it's pleasing to you because, Jesus, you created us, Lord, to have a relationship with you and to have loving relationships with one another. Lord, the cross goes both ways, vertical and horizontal. You came to reconcile. Reconcile man and God and man and man, people and people. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. God, I thank you for your people, God. I thank you for our time tonight. Thank you for those who are able to watch online. Lord, either tonight or in the future, God, thank you for them. Lord, we love you. I pray your blessing on their lives. Lord, in your precious name, amen, amen. It's so important, spend time with Jesus, amen. And, uh, you know, sometimes really in, in Sunday evening service, I'm preaching to the choir, right? <laughs> because otherwise it'd be like, well, I went, I went Sunday morning, I, I'm good. And, uh, but you're here because you love the Lord, you have a hunger in your heart. And that's not to say those who aren't here uh, don't. And, uh, but, uh, but this is a message we all need, amen? We need to guard, be, be the gardener of our heart. Praise God. But Lord bless you. Thank you for joining online. Have a wonderful week. And uh, oh, reminder, this Wednesday, regular, regular service, okay? We're not gonna have model men and uh, faith walkers until March. So we're going to be uh, meeting meeting here at 7 o'clock. God bless you.